a lot has been going on for uh, anyone in the business, whether you're managing money or whether you're a client uh, trying to keep tabs on your money here. Now that I guess the interest rate picture mm. has stabilized, it may change, but it's stabilized. Some of the issues we dealt with in 2022 are behind us. But what are clients asking you right now? Are they still looking for meaningful changes to their portfolios or are they willing to just take it as it comes right now? So we're seeing a bunch of different things, right? So when you compare it to, to your point, um, to what we saw in 2023, we saw clients in risk off territory. We saw a lot of clients switching into cash and we saw them mostly moving into passive fixed income. What we started to see towards the back end of Q4, which also persisted in Q1, both in the industry as well as in our own investment management business at BNY, we saw an increase in fixed income, actually also in LDI strategies, and also increased demand for active equity strategies again. When I look at our investment firms, Walter Scott and Newton, they have very specific strategies in high conviction, growth equity, and income in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been more interest in that than we saw 12 months ago. But in particularly, uh, very strong demand for LDI and active fixed. And that was really driving the positive flows that we've just announced as part of our first quarter earnings. What about uh, private investments, private capital investments? Yeah, so we continue to see demand for privates as well. We're, of course, not, not alone in that. And to that extent, we have been considering how we approach that part of the market. Uh, as you know, we're quite strong in traditional active and indexing and, and, and cash. And we just announced a partnership with CIFC a couple of weeks ago, which is a US-based middle market lender, already a client of the broader enterprise in asset servicing and issuer services. And from an investment management perspective, we're opening our distribution platform to CIFC to help them raise money from EMEA and APEC clients. And that is something when we talk about clients, it's also really important to investment management clients. We're seeing clients moving towards doing business with, with fewer and trusted and scaled providers. Mm. And therefore we need to consider how we go to those clients, both with sort of in-house manufactured products and then also products from third parties. What are you hearing about, say, wanting to have liquid strategies versus money tied up in private capital? So that is, al that, that is always a conversation with clients. Is it different is now in any way? Uh, it is, well, it depends on where you are, right? So if you're, say, in the U.S. institutional market that have quite a long history uh, of investing in private markets, they are quite well allocated to private market strategies. But that is not necessarily the case for pockets in Europe and APEC, and it's also not necessarily the case for a number of our intermediary clients and for the wealth segment. So it really depends on the channel and the exposure that they've had and therefore the trade-offs that they need to make between liquidity mm -hmm. and locking up money for longer. Does having, what is it, $6.6 .6 trillion in money market funds at this point? So there's a ton of money on the sidelines and I can't quite tell if that's like a good or bad thing for a business like yours. Is in like that money's gonna come into all the different strategies and, and allocate or do you feel like that money is sticky where it is right now? Well, this is, then, I, I'm, this is then also a question about rates, right, and where rates are going to go. And we had started to see with the expectation that rates were going to get, get lower earlier than perhaps what we're seeing now. Uh, we had seen clients starting to shift out of some of those money market funds, but it's not it's not consistent. Uh, in our own money market funds, we've had very good performance, so we've seen We've seen good inflows, but when you talk about that money waiting on the sideline, I do think it's waiting for duration and start adding duration to the portfolio as well as some equity components. But this is why we also work with clients on asset allocation. We've developed a number of tools that we believe are relatively unique and it really help clients understand some of those trade-offs that they make between liquid assets, traditional equi mm. active and illiquid assets. You mentioned some of those flows coming in. Is that being taken? Is that share being taken from some of your competitors? Where is that money actually coming from? So some, some is from some of our competitors. Mm. Um, and some of it comes on the back of very good performance. And some of it comes from our own clients who are shifting mm. strategies. 
so how do you sustain this, uh, Hanukkah? I mean, we talk about this idea of how we're in some sort of inflection point, whether it's for the economy or monetary policy mm. or what. You have a company like yours, your, at least your umbrella mm -hmm. company with uh, BNY Mellon, which has uh, been around for you know, 240 years uh, this year, I believe. Uh, I mean, how do you sort of transition to whatever the next phase is going to be without really knowing for sure what that phase is going to be? Yeah, so, so this is, I wish we had a crystal ball, right? We're, of course, in the business of making sure we're prepared for all eventualities. That's true for the bank, and that's true for us in investment management. In investment management, we're relatively young. Most of our firms are sort of celebrating four or five decades of being in business. So in the context of 240 years of, of, of BNY Mellon, we're still sort of in the toddler stage, if you will. Uh, but 240 years is really quite something, right, when, when you think back to that. As an investor, um, how the way I think about it is we were one of the first companies also to be included in the S&P 500, and we're actually still in the S&P 500, right, alongside another 53 that were included in the S&P 500 uh, at, in 1957. And what I think that really speaks to, which is a culture that we're also having in investment management, is the, qu the, the quality of both being resilient yeah. and providing safety and soundness, but also innovation. You've got to innovate. So we're doing that in investment management as well. Right. We are delivering more products, and we're also delivering more solutions yeah. to our clients. We only have time for one more question. I have to ask you, you're in town for the 30% club yes. events here, which seeks to increase board representation, particularly with women. Give us an update here on how much progress that initiative has made. So first of all, we've made a ton of progress. Yeah. Uh, actually, also a no small way, thanks to actually Bloomberg, we had your very own Peter Grauer in our offices yesterday at BNY Mellon, uh, where we were celebrating the launch of a cross-company mentoring program that is now in its eighth year. We had about 250 participants uh, joining us, and these cross-company mentoring programs have been really instrumental in helping women advance up the ladder in their own organization. When we look at progress, uh, we now see on boards that we have 33% of the roles on boards are held by women from 21% when Peter assumed the chair role of the US chapter. Mm -hmm. And we're also starting to see actually an increase in women taking up CEO roles because really the next battleground is in the C-suite, right? Mm -hmm. Women holding p and yeah. um, owning type roles, and that's really critical. Well, you're certainly uh, doing a uh, But we still have got a lot of work to do.